Friday on an all-new Dr. Phil. The shocking true story. Your mother kept you in a wheelchair. She kept you on a feeding tube. She said I had muscular dystrophy. She had you diagnosed with asthma, hypoventilation, epilepsy, leukemia. You know now she was making all of that up. She told me if I was to contact anybody and tell them, she would take a hammer to my fingers. Victim. Did she ever catch you walking? A couple times. She started hitting me with a coat hanger. You ran away once. She chained you up. She had taken handcuffs and a dog leash and tied me to the bed. And perpetrator. You had a boyfriend. Did you ask him to kill your mother? Yes. Deputies discovered the body of Dee Dee Blanchard early this morning. A twisted tale of a daughter. I let him in the door. Handed him rubber gloves and a knife. And then I heard her scream for me a couple times. Pushed to the edge. I wish I wouldn't have done any of that. Now, the daytime exclusive, Mother Knows Best. A story of Munchausen by proxy and murder. You're not gonna dance? A little bit. Ooh, look at that. Very pretty. Dipsy Blanchard always listened when her mother told her to do something. How old are you? You're one. I love you. Gypsy lived her life by the phrase, mother knows best. Gypsy was born perfectly healthy. Everything seemed fine. About three months old, Diddy told me that she started having seizures and sleep apnea. Where's Fifi? Don't know her. Dee Dee told me that Gypsy had problems with her salivary glands. One of her seizures made her paralyzed from mid-thigh down. Dee Dee said she wasn't going to live to be 20 years old. When people would ask me, oh, what Gypsy has wrong with her, I'm like, there was so much. The list is shorter of what she doesn't have. Gypsy was wheelchair-bound and suffered from muscular dystrophy and leukemia. Neighbors say the two were inseparable, and they were very friendly to those who lived in the neighborhood. Sweet, loving, caring, just full of life. Hurricane Katrina played a big part in their lives. Their house was devastated. They got relocated to Missouri. At that point, she's telling me she's got cancer. She's shaving her head. So that was pretty elaborate to go from chromosome disorder now. Now she's got cancer. Gypsy and Dee Dee Blanchard, a mother-daughter team who came to Springfield as self-described Hurricane Katrina evacuees, with a story of suffering that brought an outpouring of support. When they moved into their home here, it was built by Habitat for Humanity. Hundreds of volunteers worked on the home. It was built with special wheelchair modifications for her daughter. It just proves that happy endings are not just in fairy tales, they're real. Things are not always as they appear. Breaking this morning, authorities are investigating a homicide just north of Springfield. Deputies discovered the body of 48-year-old Dee Dee Blanchard inside a home early this morning. When police found Dee Dee Blanchard violently stabbed to death, they discovered her young special needs daughter was missing and only her wheelchair was left behind. No one in the neighborhood could comprehend how anyone would want to harm Dee Dee Blanchard and her handicapped daughter, Gypsy. Authorities are still looking for Dee Dee's 19-year-old daughter, Gypsy. What horrors could be happening to the sweet little girl who had already suffered her whole life, battling a laundry list of ailments like leukemia and paralysis. Everyone feared the worst for innocent Gypsy Rose. Friends of 48-year-old Dee Dee Blanchard and her daughter Gypsy called police after authorities say two disturbing messages were left on Dee Dee's Facebook page. The victim's Facebook page, which she shared with her daughter, had a post stating, the bee is dead. A missing 19-year-old has been found safe in another state. They found Gypsy in Wisconsin. She is okay. Uh, we do have another person of interest in custody. Police soon discovered a shocking web of deceit. And that deceit led to murder. Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her boyfriend, Nicholas Godijan, are both charged with premeditated murder. I didn't get a call from the police department about it or anything. Uh, we, we saw it on a local news. Courtroom this morning. They got her in handcuffs. I'm like, she's walking. Wow. 
The five foot, 99 pounds, Gypsy Blanchard pleaded not guilty to killing her mother, Dee Dee. It didn't take long for me to realize that if she can walk, what else has been a lie all these years? Tonight, police are investigating a bizarre murder that had many people in Missouri fooled. What you see behind me is the photo right here of a girl who supposedly has disabilities, along with her mother, and now next to it, what she looks like in her prison uniform without the glasses and getup. Her mom had to have been making her fake her illness all, all her life. Dee Dee Blanchard suffered from what most people refer to as severe Munchausen syndrome by proxy, also known as factitious disorder imposed on another, and kept Gypsy a prisoner her whole life by convincing her that she was victimized by a series of debilitating diseases. All she wanted was to be free. I think Gypsy had her mom killed so she could finally live the life that she wanted. She just had enough and snapped. This is a tragic, tragic event surrounded by mystery and public deception. Today, Gypsy is here in the Chillicothe Correctional Center in a very different kind of prison. Dr. Phil. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. Let's just start with kind of where you are now. You're in prison because you took a plea deal, correct? Correct. You pled to what? 10 years incarceration for second degree murder. How do you plead to the class A felony of murder in the second degree? Guilty. Should you be in this prison? To be honest, I have complicated feelings about that. I believe firmly that no matter what, murder is not OK. But at the same time, I don't believe I deserve as many years as I got. But your mother is dead. She is. Yes. And she was murdered. Yes, sir. And you were involved. I was. And but for you initiating this sequence of events, she would still be alive. Yes, sir. So in that sense, you are responsible for her death. Yes, sir. What would be a just punishment? I'm not really certain on that. I do believe that I do deserve to spend some time in prison uh -huh. for that crime. But also, I understand why it happened. And I don't believe that I'm in the right place to get the help that I need. Are you glad your mother's dead? No, sir. I'm glad that I'm out of that situation, but I am not happy she's dead. Why did you want your mother dead at the time? At the time, I knew that I was being abused, but I didn't know exactly what kind of abuse it was. I just knew that I wasn't allowed to do a lot of things. And my mother was the reason. She would force me to be in a wheelchair and force me to go to doctor's appointments that I didn't need. And I just wanted that life to stop. So ultimately, I never wanted her dead. I just wanted that life to stop, that life to be dead, the life I was living. Right. Well, let's talk about that. What's the earliest thing you remember in your childhood? I think my first memory would be in the hospital. And I remember having a surgery done to my eyes, where they had to put a patch over my eyes. And how old would you have been, you think? Probably like three or four. Do you remember going to school? I've never been to school. Never got to go to kindergarten, pre-K? No, no, sir. Do you remember playing in the backyard with other children? I played when I was younger with my cousins. Mm -hmm. As I got older, I wasn't allowed to have any more friends. Did you want to go play? I did. I asked mom if I could go play outside, make a friend. And she'd be like, it's too dangerous. You have to stay in here. Um, go play with your Barbie dolls. And so my stuffed animals became my friends. I don't think calling Gypsy's life sheltered would do it justice. Her mother controlled almost every aspect of her life. The control was total in the same sense that the control of a kidnapped victim sometimes is total. Her daughter was, in essence, a hostage. There's a point at which you got put in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And you were seven years old, correct? Yes, sir. Why did she tell you you were going in the wheelchair? I did get into a motorcycle accident with my grandfather, uh -huh. and it skinned my knee. And she took me to the hospital and then told me that um, the doctor gave her a wheelchair 
and I have to be in a wheelchair now. Forever? Forever. She had me use a walker before the wheelchair. And then after that motorcycle accident, put in the wheelchair. Why did she tell you you had to be on a walker? She said that I had muscular dystrophy. But did you feel any different the day before you got the walker than the day you did have the walker? No, sir. You were able to run around? Pretty much, yes. And would you forget to get it and run into the kitchen? There would be times that I'd forget to grab it and then go to walk. And then my mom would catch me and be like, use your walker. I, I questioned Dee Dee about it, and I'm like, she can walk or not? You know, she's going to be in a wheelchair all her life. And, you know, the answer I got from Dee Dee was, you know, she had a disease she was diagnosed with, and it was going to progressively get worse, and eventually she was going to be bound to the wheelchair at all times. Well, did she tell you when you went out that you were to stay in the wheelchair? Yes, sir, she would. But you knew you could walk? Yes, sir. Did you ever say to her, Mother, I can walk. Why am I in this wheelchair? No, sir, I never asked that. When she wasn't around, did you get up and walk secretly? I did, yes, sir. Did she ever catch you walking? She did a couple times. And what did she say or do? She got so upset with me, she would punish me so bad. Like, she started hitting me with a coat hanger and telling me all kinds of mean things. She would tell me that she wished she had an abortion when she had the chance, that I ruined her life, that I have no idea how hard it is to keep up everything she built. Did you understand that you being sick was necessary to keep up what she built? Because you got a, a house from Habitat for Humanity, you got donations, you got different things from people for being sick. Mm -hmm. So that was a source of income for her, right? It was, yes. And I had no idea that I was a part of that. You didn't know that you were a cash cow? No. Dee Dee got a house from Habitat for Humanity. They would have free trips here and there, free flights. She was getting some money from a couple celebrities. Their life was full of free stuff, I guess, fun stuff. The Blanchard scammed many different charities and lied to many different charities across the U.S., including churches and support groups. Dee Dee Blanchard was exaggerating her daughter's medical condition for financial gain. You were diagnosed with epilepsy about this time as well, right? Yes, sir. And so they started giving you Tegretol, mm -hmm. and it caused your teeth to crumble. Yes, sir. Did you know what was happening at the time? No, I really didn't. I just didn't understand why my teeth were falling out. I had to have them extracted. I just knew I was losing teeth. But you know now you didn't have epilepsy. I know now. You know now you didn't need to be in that wheelchair. Mm -hmm. You know now she was making all of that up. After you went in the wheelchair, you had a feeding tube inserted. Yes, sir. Did she tell you why? My mother told the doctors that I couldn't eat, so they put a permanent feeding tube in. Looking back, are you suspect as to what she might have been putting in that tube? Could she have been poisoning you in some way to keep you sickly? We now return to Mother Knows Best. A Dr. Phil Big Time exclusive. Startling new developments in an already bizarre murder case. Gypsy Blanchard now charged with killing her mother and a wide-ranging fraud scheme uncovered by investigators. It is a twisted story. To find that this little girl had brutally orchestrated her mother's murder is really hard to swallow. You had a feeding tube inserted. Yes, sir. Looking back, are you suspect as to what she might have been putting in that tube? It does pique my curiosity because I don't know all the names of the medications that I was on. Could she have been poisoning you in some way to keep you sickly? Could she have been over-medicating you to keep you weak? It's a possibility. When you went to see doctors, did she tell you what to say? Did she tell you what not to say? She told me that I couldn't speak during the doctor's appointment, that it would just solely be her. She would tell me, you know, sit in the wheelchair, play with your Barbie dolls, and 
let me talk and don't interrupt. And this continued on even into my 20s. My mother told the doctors that I was mentally incompetent. Therefore, they thought, you know, she won't know what she's talking about. She's got the mind of like a, a child. Uh-huh. So did she tell you that you were intellectually challenged? Yes, sir. Tell me what she said to you about that. How did she explain that to you? She would always use the medical term for everything that was wrong, that I had microcephaly, which is small head, that my brain didn't develop right, and I'll never mature past a six-year-old's level, mental level. Did you ever say to her, there's nothing wrong with me? No. You saw a doctor in New Orleans that did a muscle biopsy on you to check for muscular dystrophy. Mm -hmm. Now, a muscle biopsy for muscular dystrophy is a very painful procedure. I still have the scar. Yeah, they, they strip muscle from your thigh, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever know what the results were? No, sir. What do you know now about that? It came back normal. And she knew that? I think that she did know that if a doctor wouldn't give her the results that she wanted or say what she wanted them to say, she would switch to a different doctor. Gypsy has essentially fallen through every crack there is in the system. Literally everyone failed her, literally. The doctors 
Your position is there to help her. Didn't help her. You wound up seeing a doctor Bernardo Flasterstein, a lot comes tumbling down at this point, right? Because he has you stand up, right? Mm -hmm. Where was your mother at this point? She was inside the room. With you? With me. He kind of um, held my hands and I put some weight on my legs. And I think that gave him the inkling that this girl could walk. This girl is not paralyzed. She has muscle strength. And how did your mother react to that? She did not like him whatsoever. She was like, I'm, I'm not even bringing you back to see him. I'm switching doctors. Each one of these paper clips is some, some medical record where Dee Dee essentially lied to the doctor about something. And this is something that you see almost uh, across all of the records. Then we get into the family history. The family history changed depending on what doctor she was at. Flasterstein wrote, this mother is not a good historian. He says, quote, analyzing all the facts, there's a strong possibility of Munchausen by proxy. So he says, there's a good chance that this mother is making this child sick on purpose for her own gain. He wrote that down. He talked to another doctor you had seen before who said, I found nothing wrong with her. He writes down, Munchausen by proxy, this mother is not to be trusted. What happened from that? Nothing ever came of it. It didn't stop. Nobody said anything. Nothing was done. When did you figure this out? We now return to a story of Munchausen by proxy and murder. Munchausen syndrome by proxy, also known as factitious disorder imposed on another, is considered a mental illness where a person acts as if an individual in their care has a physical or mental illness when the person is not really sick. People with this disorder have an inner need for the person, often their child, to be seen as ill and are sometimes even willing to put the child through painful or risky tests and operations to get sympathy and special attention for themselves. The doctor writes down, Munchausen by proxy, this mother is not to be trusted. What happened from that? We switched doctors and nothing ever came of it. It didn't stop. Nobody said anything. Nothing was done. When did you figure this out? I started having an inkling when I turned 19. And I had made a friend, Aaliyah. She was our next door neighbor. And I started wondering, why can't I be like Aaliyah? Why can't I have friends? Why can't I go to the mall with friends? Why can't I go outside and meet people? because I would look at her life and her life was so different from mine, so it made me question my life. Did you ever tell her secretly to the side, I'm in this wheelchair, but I can walk? I wanted to, I really did, because I looked at her like a, a sister, um, but I just didn't trust her that much. I thought maybe she'd tell my mom and that would get me in more trouble. Did you ever tell your dad? No, my mother would tell me such awful things about my father. My parents are divorced. My mother would tell me he abandoned us. He doesn't want anything to do with you. He's happy with his new family now. He doesn't love you. So I thought, why bother going to him when he won't care? They started moving further and further away and the visits became more scarce. You know, I'd call and say, you know, where's Gypsy? And we talk to her and say, well, she's taking a nap. Uh, call back in an hour, I'll have her ready for you. So, you know, I'd call back and, you know, she'd be ready there with all the right answers. And it's scary to think what she told Gypsy, the consequences she'd have if, if she did say anything, you know. Pretty soon, I found a couple of bits of paper in my mom's safe, things that stated that I was born in 1991 made me question my real age. I asked her about it. She said that it was a typo. I had taken those papers and the Medicaid card that I found with my actual real birthday on it, and I ran away from home. 
didn't get very far because she found me pretty quickly and took me back home. And boy, was I in a lot of trouble. What happened when you got home? She smashed my laptop. How did she smash it? It was a hammer. And she told me if I was to contact anybody, any of her friends, and tell them that she would take a hammer to my fingers next time. And then she put a bell on the door. So if I tried to run away again, she could hear it. And she had taken handcuffs and a dog leash and tied it together and tied me to the bed, chained me to the bed. So how long were you tied to the bed? About two weeks. I just don't understand how somebody can do this to their child, their child that they're supposed to protect and love, not use them as a cash cow and use them for their own means. Do you think she loved you? When I was younger, I thought that. And then when I found out the truth, I'm like, I didn't know this woman at all, did I? Everything that she ever told me was a lie. So how can I honestly believe her whenever she told me she loved me? She kept you in a wheelchair. She kept you on a feeding tube. She had you diagnosed with asthma, hypoventilation, epilepsy, hearing and vision impairment, GI reflux, muscular dystrophy, quadriplegia, mild mental retardation, as she called it, anemia, allergies, leukemia, incontinence, lung disease, heart disease, heart murmur, all of these things. They had you on pages and pages of medications, many of which have side effects that mimic the diseases that she said you had. You were being set up. Right. Why would she do that to you? We now return to a Dr. Phil daytime exclusive, Mother Knows Best. They had you on pages and pages of medications, many of which have side effects that mimic the diseases that your mother said you had. You were being set up. Right. Why would she do that to you? I don't know. Didi, we had some books we found in the house, you know, uh, leukemia for dummies and, you know, different books like that. So she did her research. She knew the terminology. She knew how to make Gypsy appear to have certain symptoms by giving her certain medications, you know. She, uh, she was pretty slick. What does that cause you to feel when you realize how viciously exploitive this woman was with you. When I first found out, I was so angry and hurt. And it's like, I trusted her so much to do everything that she told me to do, be her good little girl like she wanted me to be. And every time I'd mess up, I'd always ever say, next time I'll do better, next time I'll do better. Don't get angry with me. And. It just hurts, because every time she told me that she loved me, that she was trying to protect me, now that I know, the only person I need protection from is her. And I want to know what was so wrong that I did to her for her to do that to me, because I don't understand. You ran away once. She chained you up. Mm -hmm. But then you start talking to somebody online. You go on a dating site. I made an online dating profile on a Christian dating website uh -huh. because I started to have feelings of wanting a boyfriend. And that was something that was never allowed. Mm -hmm. Never allowed. And at the time you got on there, was your head shaved at that point? It was, yes, sir. Because you had been told you had leukemia, right? Yes, sir. And she said, let's shave your head because it's going to fall out. We'll at least keep it even. Yes, sir. But you now know she wanted you to look like a cancer patient. Yes, sir. But you go on the dating site, and you've got a shaved head. I wore wigs. You, you put wigs on. Mm -hmm. you, you were kind of big into costumes a lot, right? I was, yes. You would wear wigs and, and costumes just to this kind of a fantasy type thing? Yes, sir. Entertain yourself? I Entertain mean, myself. How old are you here? Um, 21. You're 21 here. Mm -hmm. And what was the occasion for this picture? Um, we would go to a sci-fi fantasy convention. 
we being your mother and you, mm -hmm. okay, in your wheelchair. In my wheelchair, yes. And how about this picture? That was at Disney World. And who are you in this picture? Cinderella. Does that seem odd now? It does seem odd. So you're on the computer and you register on a, a Christian dating site, right? Yes, sir. And it's on this Christian dating site that you meet Nicholas. Nicholas Godijan, the man who was arrested with Gypsy and charged with Dee Dee's murder. Godijan also has a criminal past. In 2013, he was arrested after investigators say he was watching pornography and fondling himself in a McDonald's restaurant for nine hours. Police charged him with carrying a concealed weapon. And you guys communicate for about a year? Our relationship was about almost three years. How much of it was just talking back and forth on the computer? 99% of it. What did he say when you said, I'm in a wheelchair, but I can walk? He said that he knew already. He said that he was psychic and that he had these premonitions that I could walk. And what did you think about that? Um, it was more of the tamer things that, that he used to talk about. He also thought that he was a 500-year-old vampire named Victor. A 500-year-old vampire named Victor. What would you think about that? We now return to Mother Knows Best, a Dr. Phil daytime exclusive. On this Christian dating site, you meet Nicholas. He said that he was psychic and that he had these premonitions. He thought that he was a 500-year-old vampire named Victor. A 500-year-old vampire named Victor. What would you think about that? I was like, oh, OK. I played along, I guess. You didn't believe it? Or did you? I, I, think, I think a part of me did believe it at the time. You did believe he was a 500-year-old vampire named Victor living in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. What else did he talk about that was less tame than that he was a psychic? Um, that he had multiple personalities. Um, Victor was only one of them. He had other personalities that were much more violent and scary that such I as? had. Such as he called him the black one. And he would just talk in this horrible, scary voice, and he would talk about how he wanted to kill me and how he wanted to rape me. He said, I will kill you so bad that they will never find your body. Um, but you wanted to meet him. I did. I was in love with the, or thought I was in love with the good side of him. I was very, very naive back then. I've never, I never had a boyfriend. I didn't know a good relationship from a bad one. All I ever knew of love was what my mother showed me. There was pretty sexual content to your going back and forth on the internet, right? Yes, sir. He, he was um, erotic role playing and BDSM. Mm -hmm. And you had alter egos as well, right? I made alter egos to fit his. Okay, like, tell me about Little Kitty. Um, Little Kitty was kind of um, a little girl. I kind of based her looks off of anime cartoons. You said it was based on his... His personality. And which one did that one go with? That went with his little boy personality. And then there was uh, Candy. Mm-hmm. What was that? Candy was more of... Um, the vixen, more um, risque. And that went with what? That went with his, um, that personality that's more sexual. And what about Ruby? Ruby was for Victor. Ruby was for the vampire? Mm-hmm. So Ruby was evil? Ruby was a werewolf, and she was the evil one. OK. So that goes on for quite some time, right? Mm-hmm. When did you meet him for real? In March of 2015. And where was that? 
um, at a movie theater. We went to see the new version of Cinderella. Right. And my mother and I was going to see the movie. So I had asked him, why don't you come and meet me finally? We can meet at the movie. And so he, he took a Greyhound bus to Springfield, Missouri. From? From Wisconsin. Were you excited? I was. I was very excited to meet this person that, you know, I've been talking to for so long. Do you go in a costume? I did. Did people look at you? They just thought it was like a little girl wanting to dress up for a Disney princess movie. And how was he dressed? I had bought him some nice clothes to wear and sent it to him. I just wanted him to look nice so hopefully he can impress my mother. She didn't know he had come down from Wisconsin. No. She just thought some guy you bumped into at the movie. Right. So were you alone with him at the movie? No, my mother was sitting right next to us. And then my mother got increasingly angry because I was paying more attention to him than I was to her. OK. Was this picture taken at the movie? Yes. OK. Did you? have sexual relations with him at the movie? Yes, sir. Where was your mother? She was in the auditorium. We had went to the bathroom, in the men's bathroom. I wheeled myself to the bathroom, and he followed while my mother was still in the auditorium. And she knew he was following? Yes. She thought that he was going to get popcorn. Yeah, you were going to go to the bathroom, and he was going to get popcorn. Mm -hmm. But you both went into the men's bathroom. Mm -hmm. And where did you go once you got in there? Um, the handicap stall. And what happened then? Um, we had sex. So you have sex in the handicap stall in the men's bathroom at the Cinderella movie. Mm -hmm. And then you get back in your chair and motor back out to the auditorium. And she, she knew none the better. You know, here she is. She's 24 years old. She's growing up. I mean, you can't deny adolescence. She really loved the guy. She wanted to have a family. She wanted to be married. People do a lot of things for love. Now, it's after this meeting at the movies. Did you ask him to kill your mother? Mother Knows Best, a Dr. Phil daytime exclusive continues. Investigators say the awful Facebook posts that tipped off friends that something was wrong were actually authored by Gypsy herself. She told investigators she knew her boyfriend, Nicholas Gojon, was going to kill her mother, and she did nothing to stop it. After this meeting at the movies, did you ask him to kill your mother? Yes. We had thought of different ideas. We called it Plan B. I was getting desperate, and we bounced around that idea. But did you ask him, quote, will you kill my mother for me? I probably did, yes, sir. Now, you had some text exchanges that seemed to me that this plan B was pretty much a collaborative process. On June 2nd, you send a text that says, I'm 100% in, hun. I'm ready, truly. He says, why you say that, baby? You say, because I finally allowed myself to accept you're my everything. I will go with you and live our dream. So then on the ninth, you say, hun, does he require just the gloves and knife? When you're saying he to Nick, you're referring to his alter ego, Victor, right? Yes, sir. And Nick says, "Hun, that side of me expects duct tape, too, to muffle her. You say, OK, baby, we have that. I'll pre-cut it. At 725, Nick says, dear, I should ask you this before he has to. Is your mom a light or deep sleeper? You say, light, hun. OK, dear. Now he's excited. The is going to go down tonight, Ruby said. That's your alter ego, your evil side. And he says, well, how does Ruby feel about it? She keeps me numb in order to cope and survive. We now fast forward to that night, 8.36 PM. 
You text, I left the gloves outside the front door and the screen door is squeaky. So try to open it just enough to get in and close it gentle. I'll hand him the knife and the duct tape inside, darling. It's pre-cut and ready. At any point during this time, did you look at this and say, this, this is beyond weird here? I'm talking to a guy that's talking about himself in the third person. The third person's a 500-year-old vampire, and he's glad that my mother's a light sleeper so she'll be awake when he's hacking her to death. I mean, even though at the time you felt like you wanted her dead, did you think this is beyond strange? I want to remind you, this is Gypsy's story, and the allegations she makes against her former boyfriend, Nicholas Godijan, cannot be confirmed. Godijan is charged with first-degree murder and has pleaded not guilty. He has not been convicted of any crime. At any point during this time, did you look at this and say, this is beyond strange? To be honest, I didn't even, I didn't think it was real because we had been talking about it for so long that I became numb to the idea like, oh, okay, we're just having another conversation about it. We're not actually taking the steps to planning this and this is going to happen. I'll hand him the knife and the duct tape inside, darling. It's pre-cut and ready. At that point, you knew this was happening, right? I just went through the motions. It didn't sink in until it was actually happening. He says, baby, there's no other option. He's going to finish her no matter what. That is how he is. And you say, OK, darling, he is brave. I respect and admire that smiley face. But after we comfort each other, after we do that, sweetheart, I'll hold you like the baby girl of mine that you are. Tell me in your own words what happened that night. Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil, did she plot to murder her mother? You were tortured as a child. You think this was your only exit? I thought it was. Her boyfriend accused. I asked him to kill my mother, but I didn't hold a gun to his head. The prison interview. The night of the murder, your mother was screaming your name for help. I put my hands over my ears. And then it all went quiet. What happened? And this is less than 24 hours after your mother is stabbed to death. The shocking home video. <laughs> A daytime exclusive. I wish I wouldn't have done any of that. You do not want to miss tomorrow. You're going to see what became the perfect storm of naivete, perversion, and distortion of the truth that led to tragic death. I want to thank HBO for use of their footage from the HBO documentary film, Mommy Dead and Dearest, which can be seen on HBO Now and HBO Go. We'll see you next time.